Jason Cole, Bleacher Report, covers the NFL. Jason Tiki and Tierney, Happy New Year, pal. How you been? I'm great. Happy New Year to you guys. Right back at you, buddy. Uh, okay, you probably heard what I just said. Uh, we know the openings now. Does anything happen with the Colts, or do you think we're finished? Well, I think we've got the Colts hanging out there, Houston's hanging out there, Detroit's hanging out there, and New Orleans, depending on what they do with Sean Payton. So I think there are four teams that are still sort of in play a little bit. I kind of get the feeling that when Jim Irsay comes down, if he hasn't already, they'll probably continue down this road. I don't necessarily mm-hmm. think that that's a good idea, yep. but – I think that that's what they'll ultimately do because you know when you give guys four year contract extensions, paying that off is not is not cheap. Yeah. Isn't it worse? I'm sorry. Isn't it? I was going to. Isn't it worse though um, to compound it? If you really think you made a mistake, just cut the cord. I mean, I know money's money. It's easy to spend somebody else's money, but if you're convinced that certainly in Gregson's case, I think Pagano's better at his job than Greg. Gregson's terrible. He's awful. i well. Look, I, I, I'll say this. I think philosophically they have a problem, which is they kind of, both guys basically are saying we're going to be a you know we're going to pound the ball with the running game and we're going to stop the run, and it's like you play indoors with Andrew Luck as your quarterback. Go wide open. You've got the next. You've got the second coming of of Peyton Manning in terms of brilliance and idea for the game. Let him run wild with it. Get you know let him go with Moncrief and Hilton and all those guys, and just throw it around. Uh, I don't understand why you're, you're playing tough guy ball. You're an indoor team. And I see it, and, and I think that that problem manifests itself during the season because they, when they face fourth and one, they did it three or four times this year in critical games, both games against Houston. They line up in fourth and one. They're lining up in shotgun. So they're basically saying in the most critical moments of a game when we have to have it, what are we doing? We're giving the ball to Andrew Luck. I mean, we're not trying to pound it with Frank Gore. That's not our identity. We're a wide-open team. Well, be that wide-open team. Get your philosophy straight. And I think that both the GM and the coach have to go. You know, when I think about another team that's it's teetering with their head coach, uh, the Saints, and more importantly, Sean Payton, seems to be, I don't know, uh, acting like he wants to stay. What happens down there? All the right things. Yeah, he's yeah. saying all the right things, but does he need to? Because I think it's out there that they're open to moving him, and it feels like, and I don't know if you get this feeling, I know BT does, that maybe it's just expired. Like he's been there lo- a long time, and, and the impact isn't the same as it was when he first got there. Well, the old Larry, Be- Larry Bird theory that the message only lasts so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, I think there's something to that. And I think there's something to. You know, certain head coaches don't have a great ability to start over at the beginning to say, okay, look, I've got to go all the way back and I've got to redo this from the start. They get impatient. They don't want to, and I always say it like this, they don't want to teach the first 3,000 you know, pages of their playbook again, okay, all the fundamental stuff that they, they want to do. I know that's sort of a euphemism, but that's, that's how I view it. Like John Gruden was the king of that. Like, ah, I want a veteran quarterback because I don't want to teach him all that that stupid stuff. Whereas you get a guy like Bill Belichick who says, look, every year is unique. We're going to start over from fundamental one on the first day of OTAs or you know our off-season program, and we're going to carry that through. And we may be able to accelerate past a few things because we have guys that may know it a little bit faster. Okay, but – we're going to make sure that we cover all of our bases every single year and, you know, and follow a process. And I think a lot of coaches get impatient with that. I think Sean has gotten impatient in New Orleans because he, you know, got to the mountaintop and it's like, okay, well, we should get to the mountaintop right away. And it's like, well, wait a second, you still got to stop at the, you still got to start at the bottom of the mountain to climb to the top. Yeah. No. Let's go to Jason Cole, Bleacher Report, uh, here on Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. So, Jason, what's your order, by the way, one, two, and three for the MVP? Never got your thoughts on that. Uh, I would go Ezekiel Elliott, number one. Um, I would go Matt Ryan, number two. And probably Tom Brady, number three, although a good, good discussion between him and Aaron Rodgers. And the reason I say this is Ezekiel Elliott has not only gotten the Cowboys back to where they were two years ago with DeMarco Murray and being a, a, a major contender, uh, impossible championship team, but he did that while working with a 
uh, a rookie quarterback. This is not like you just plug Romo back in and then, okay, here comes a running back and we'll be good because we've got a now, now we've got a really good running back. Um, Ezekiel Elliott was dynamic. I think that the kinds of things that he did, the big plays that he ripped off, you know, whenever you see him, you know, with a 25-yard run, 25 yard run, a 30-yard run, a 50-yard run, uh, catching a screen pass and taking it, you know, for a long way, it scared defenses. And I think that that allowed Dak Prescott to operate and have one of the greatest, you know, rookie seasons ever for a quarterback, if not the greatest rookie season ever for a quarterback. And I think that all revolves around Ezekiel Elliott. I'm not trying to downgrade Dak Prescott. He certainly was great in and of himself. But all of that revolves around that running back and what he created. You talked about Matt, we talked about Matt Ryan. And look, 9.3 yards per pass attempt. I know that's not – some people don't get what that means. Oh, that means phenomenal. every single time you threw it, you got nine – whether it was incomplete or complete, yep. you were averaging 9.3 yards. That's, an, that's, that's a video game number. <laughs> okay, so that's – that's really crazy. So, but I would give Ezekiel Elliott the edge um, slightly. Over you know, by the way, Jay, he also yeah, uh, he also set an NFL record for 13 different receivers catching touchdowns. My guy's Matt Ryan, but I hear you. I can make a case for Elliott as well. It's a yeah, good call. I love that. I love that, uh, Jason, that you are getting behind the running backs. for. I, I, I can't world. imagine why, T. <laughs> exactly. Look, a uh, quarterback question, though. Tom Savage was banged up last weekend. Are the Houston Texans going to be forced to go back to Brock Osweiler? I mean, what is? I mean, they they don't have a chance with him at quarterback. And I guess really the question is, from an inside perspective, why they're is playing, his, they're playing Oakland? Yeah, true, like, and they don't have a quarterback either. But why has he been so bad, Brock? I think it doesn't fit the system. I, I think that Brock Osweiler fits, and this is the discussion I was having with his agent Jimmy Sexton before he signed this contract, and I said, Jimmy. I mean, this is a mistake. You know, the the I understand the money, I understand taking the cash, but leave him in a system that he fits in. And you know, he's a guy who he's more athletic than you see. You, you want to get him moving around, doing some of the Gary Kubiak, you know, bootleg stuff, rollout stuff. And he's got a big arm. Okay, so you want to attack downfield. Um, you put him in a Bill O'Brien Patriots offense, which is. Quick read, get the ball out of your hands, get it, you know, here, get it there, you know. That's not what he's built to do. And that system requires a tremendous amount of thinking and learning. And, you know, it's, it's not that he's a stupid kid, but it's not what he was asked to do before. And so I always thought this was a really bad fit and put an awful lot of pressure on Brock Osweiler because the other part of this was, uh, you know, you, you had a team that everybody thinks is ready to contend and win a championship, and even though you take away J.J. Watt, everybody sits there and says, oh, they've got DeAndre Hopkins, and they've got Clowney, and they've got this guy, and they've got that one guy. You know, they should be ready to just take off. Um, everybody interprets that the quarterback is going to be the difference maker, and Osweiler's not that kind of a difference maker, but the pressure was on right from the start that he was going to be that guy. And so I always thought that this was this was a forced fit, that was going to put undue pressure on that kid to be a great player where he should have probably just stayed in Denver the whole time. Yeah, he's bombed, no question. Jason, good stuff. Uh, we'll be reading you. Bleacher Report, NFL writer, and again, Happy New Year. Thanks, pal. Happy New Year, guys. Be good. Thanks.